Welcome to Youth Sunday School. So, I was trying to think, because we finished our fruit series, um, I was trying to think what we should talk about today. And I thought, you know, what we really need right now is just some encouragement. Um, what's something really encouraging I could share? And then I thought, you know what I think the most encouraging book of the Bible is? is Philippians. So I'm going to share with you some scripture from Philippians, but first I'll give you some background info about it. The cool thing about Philippians is that a lot of Paul's, it's one of Paul's letters to the people of Philippi in the Roman Empire. The people of Philippi that are, you know, they formed a community, a church there that Paul has founded. They are experiencing persecution by the Roman authorities because at that point in time, pre-Constantine, the Roman authorities were not Christian and they were not okay with Christians existing because giving Jesus the utmost authority in your life challenged giving the emperor the utmost authority in your life. And so, um, for a long time, Romans weren't okay with Christians and persecuted them. Persecution meaning, like, throwing them into pits of wild animals that would eat them and, like, brutally killing Christians in other ways, um, forcing them to practice their faith in secret. Not so much persecution that we talk about today, where um, some Christians will complain that because other people are having religious freedom, they're somehow being persecuted. That's not persecution. Being persecuted and being unpopular are two different things. Anyways, and so Paul is writing to encourage the Philippians in Philippi because they're living in a difficult time under a difficult government that doesn't want them to exist. And so he's sharing friendship. And this is different from some of Paul's other letters because a lot of the New Testament epistles or letters from Paul are written to churches that are having issues, like with infighting and not getting along and treating people badly and not being Christ-like. And so several of the New Testament letters that Paul wrote to church communities were kind of telling them to get it together, be nice to each other. Um, but Philippians is different because Philippians... Paul is just kind of saying, hey, you're my friends, I love you, we can do this. Hooray! It's a very encouraging book. So a couple of fun facts about Philippians that I just wanted to share. One, Philippians makes it obvious that there were women in positions of leadership in the early church. He mentions two women by name, Euodia and Syntyche. I hope I said those right. And so that's cool because... Really, in the early church, women were prominent leaders because a lot of church people met in homes, and in ancient Roman structure, the home was the place that, like, women took charge over, and so a lot of women would, like, host the church and would lead the church, and that only changed later on when patriarchy took hold. When we're looking at why Paul chose to send this letter at this time, uh, biblical scholars are pretty sure it's because he just happened to come across someone who was heading that way towards Philippi uh, from where he was kept in prison, and so he used it as um, convenience to send a letter, because there wasn't any like official reliable postal service in ancient Rome uh, in, during, during that time, and so basically when you wanted to send someone a letter, if someone was, was going somewhere where you wanted your letter to go, you would send it with them. And so Paul, not necessarily, I don't think he necessarily had any issues to address in particular. He just wanted to send a letter to them saying, hey, I love you, keep going, you got this. And I think that we could all use some encouragement right now because it's just hard. It's winter, there's a pandemic, a lot of us are feeling isolated and lonely. And it's hard. Um, it's hard to find joy. It's hard to feel happy all the time. It's, it's just a difficult time. And I think that we could all use some encouragement from Paul, reminders that God is present with us. So let's read this one passage from, it's from Philippians 4, 
Philippians only has four chapters. It's very short. Philippians 4, and it's verses 4 through 9. Be glad in the Lord always. Again I say, be glad. Let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all your requests to God in your prayers and petitions, along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. From now on, siblings, if anything is excellent and if anything is admirable, focus your thoughts on these things. All that is true, all that is holy, all that is just, all that is pure, all that is lovely, and all that is worthy of praise. Practice these things. Whatever you learned, received, heard, or saw in us, the God of peace will be with you. <sighs> and so what I particularly love about this passage, I like that it says, let your gentleness show in your treatment of all people. So to just let that softness and love pervade you so that you don't come across as like a walled off rock of a person who can't be touched. Um, but instead just be soft and kind and gentle because we all need gentleness right now. Don't be anxious about anything. That's one that gives me some stress. <laughs> Being told not to be anxious makes me anxious because I have anxiety. <sighs> but I think the point of that one is to share our concerns with God through prayer. Sometimes just the act of sharing the things that you are anxious about or concerned about can help you feel less anxious and concerned because you've shared it. Just just share what, what you're feeling bad about. People want to help you. Then the peace of God that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Being kept safe by peace. Letting God's peace fill you to the point where you are safe and afloat. And even though you are soft and vulnerable, you're still safe because God has poured so much love into you that nothing can take that away. And then that final verse at the end of 9, um, the God of peace will be with you. Just remembering that God is with us. Um, we can't see God all the time. Sometimes we don't, don't feel that God is with us. Uh, but God is there, and we can know that in our minds, even when we don't feel it in our hearts. And be reminded that God is a God of peace, who, if we can just stop and take some breaths, and close our eyes and have a moment of quiet and focus on the idea that God is with us, then we can calm down and find some peace and find some love and we can get through. God is carrying us through these difficult times. That's about all I have to share. I just want to share encouragement. Um, if you're feeling lonely or isolated, let me know. I'm around on weekdays after school hours, 3 to 5, on Zoom. There's a link on our website that you can find. And just check in and talk if you want to, if you want someone to hang out with. If you're feeling lonely, just let me know. Uh, I'm here. I hope that you all have a, a good week, that you are able to focus on the things you got to get done, and also able to focus on the fun stuff in life as well. Make sure to share your burdens and your anxieties with God and with others so that you don't have to bear them alone. And know that you are loved. Bye!